people, my people. Now, my people, hopefully um, the RTD reviews with uh, Blake, Chantel and Odette weren't, true tra weren't too traumatizing for you. If you haven't seen them yet, now would be the time to stop watching this momentarily, pause this, go over and watch the two reviews, and possibly three or four, depending on when this video comes to air. I've got a funny feeling. Yeah. Come on. There are reviews by um, Blake, Chantel and Odette. Um, if you like your giggle, and you don't like your reviews too seriously, go over. Now, tonight, now that we've got Blake, Chantel, and their dad, who are all extremely good-looking women, um, out of the way, we're going to review uh, Jindu's A Coastal Gin. Screw top, so we have no sound of happiness. Thanks, Matt. The smell of happiness says <clears throat> that, yeah, I am very much dealing with a um, coastal gin. In fact, I've had a quick look at the aromatics on the side, and I will do it again for my professors. And obviously, there's juniper, my coastal event. Sunrise lime, not sitting that list too close to the um, coast. Rainforest lychee. Matt doesn't say whether that's actually a native or an exotic, though given Jindu's uh, commitment to... Uh, Australian um, natives, it's more likely going to be a native, uh, local. Muntries, local juniper. Mountain pepper leaf, that's inland. Coastal rosemary, Westringia. Coastal soap bush, would more likely be a uh, keener pot of some sort. I'm more likely wrong on that. And solo wattle seed, which could also be a coastal event. So most of that will live within about a kilometre of um, salty water. That's just me and my horticultural training coming in. Um, so, it's room temperature. Room temperature, as I record it, is a healthy... It's 1920. It's getting cool, because um, we're getting into autumn in Australia. Um, but it's not yet cold. So what the long of that is, is that I don't need to warm this up too much with my hands to get this baby up and um, running. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Matt has not exactly um, stinted the pepper berries in this recipe. Because this baby hits the gills at a robust 48%. So, this is likely to be one of those wind chill removers for um, winter. Uh, had neat. Yeah, it's very on the nose. It's very... Sees, um, there's a, basically a lot of salt in this for me. Okay, it's pleasant. Um, oh, and before I go, I got this and the barrel aged gin at a discount. So there is a obliged to, obliged to disclose that you that, um, yes, I paid for them, but I had, I think, about a third off because Matt, for some reason, perhaps because he's got cute, poor taste and people actually likes me, apparently. Um, thinks me funny. Would you believe it? <laughs> Odette, on the other hand, Chantel, they're funny. Me, I need a bag over my head to be funny, I think. Um, so the nose is, yeah, very much, this is very much a seaside gin. It's a dry gin, it's not going to be terribly complicated to figure out. I would sip it neat, were I so inclined. Where I not to have other things to do tomorrow. Having said that, I will add my little sipping glass and a healthy measure of this to an ice cube. Um, yeah, I love the chemistry of this. My other half teaches it. I practice it, and I love practicing chemistry with gin and tonic. It's actually one reason why I do almost overwhelmingly gin, apart from the fact that Melbourne at the moment, or Australia at the moment, is just gin nuts and it's easier to come across really good gins in Victoria and, and Australia than what it is really good local whiskies or brandies. So that is changing. So, Mediterranean. 
Um, Fever Tree Mediterranean, Sound of Happiness. Let's see how this changes this baby. Oh, I like the luching. See the color change? They call that luching. And you know, the sh isn't just because we've helped ourselves to a number of this stuff. So, <clears throat> the Burner Pepperberry is still right up front. Um, <clears throat> investment tip buy pepperberry share it shares okay um, between these guys and organic neighbor they're um, the navy um, there's a lot of pepperberries being used oh. okay the beaver tree tonic is going to impart a good amount of citrus to it. But this is just basically going to come down to, I'm going to take Matt's words on these individual ar aromatics because I've yet to actually sit down and nibble on the plants themselves. I should mean I can, but they're not poisonous. Um, to actually get a clear idea of what they taste so I can actually differentiate them in a drink. Having said this, let me say that. Having said this, let me say that. Having said that, let me say this. And having said this, let me say that. Um, are you confused yet? I am. I'm born that way. It is a very, very workable dry gin um, with a nice coastal trip. I mean, all the elements that he's combined work really well. Um, and it's good that Matt himself is a very large man because I'm certain that you would need the liver of an ox to actually be distilling gins and actually going through your recipes and go, oh, this doesn't quite work. Let's try it again. And that's uh, the, the, <clears throat> the progress of elimination to you end up with a really good batch or a really good recipe um, would be taxing on the average liver. And Matt is a fair bit bigger than I am, and I'm not a small man. I'm 183, six foot for you Americans. And Matt would be hitting this six foot four. He's better part of 190 um, centimeters. Either way, this with its beautiful nourishing is going to be beautiful drinking, both neat and in a GNT over winter. Um, mm. Oh yeah. I mean, why go and visit the coast when you can damn well drink it? So I'm Erden. Um, thank you for watching. Go and have a chat. Blake, Odette, and Chantel, and the beautiful ladies, um, and have a giggle. I'll catch you around with um, this basically two men's signature. Catch ya, have fun, go off, be naughty, bye.